morning, Joe. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. Thank you for calling Take in. Thanks for a good week. Yeah, it looks that way, absolutely. And boy, it could not have been nicer for Memorial Day services yesterday. It was a beautiful day. Uh, my day sat at the Hall Cemetery, which is near the um, burial place of Cyril P. Marset, who the post is named after, the American Legion post in West Quincy. So they've done that for a long, long time, the Marset post. So then from there we went to the main activity of the day, which was the parade and then the ceremony at Mount Wallace and Cemetery. I thought the crowds were bigger than they have been in years um, because it was a beautiful day. Some nice bands, the Quincy and North Quincy High combined band. It's just terrific. Uh, so impressive. And, of course, the, the highlight of the day was our guest speaker, um, Chief Warrant Officer Nick Lavery, who actually lived in Quincy when he was three. He talked about that yesterday on Babcock Street. He's lived all over Massachusetts. So he calls Massachusetts his home. Uh, he's got several towns as, uh, as a specific birthplace. But anyway, he's, uh, he's quite a guy. He was uh, injured badly in Afghanistan when a, an Afghan who was part of their training turned on them. And they shot, he was shot four times in one leg and one time in the other leg. He had to put his own tourniquet on, et cetera, et cetera. He's part of, he's a Green Beret Special Forces. And what the incredible story is that uh, he, he put a tourniquet on himself and, um, you know, got out of the, the zone. And then, of course, a lot of surgeries later, he insisted on going back to his unit. He's the, uh, I don't know if he's the only am- amputee, but um, he's got to be right up there for going back into special forces, back to his unit, fighting. I mean, it's just remarkable. And he talked about that yesterday and said, you know, he named a number of individuals he served with who were killed in action and said, I do it for them. He says, they can't do it. I can do it. And he does it in their honor. He was really terrific. He had his wife with him and two young boys. And he got a great Quincy warm welcome. But he really uh, he honored us with his presence yesterday, for sure. And, of course, we had Congressman Lynch. We had all the elected dignitaries and two of the Gold Star families, Mrs. Durkin and some of the Caldwell family were there. And, of course, uh, distinguished veterans from all across the city. So it was a great day. Yeah, I know it, it kind of capped uh, really a full weekend of uh, Memorial Day uh, events. Uh, the Flags for Veterans Island ceremony there as well. Uh, it's very popular. And uh, well, yeah. and and the cemetery looked absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's a gorgeous cemetery anyway. But when the flags are on that on that slope, it really is handsome. Yes, and there'll be a, will there not be a special veteran section now at Pine Hill Cemetery once that project's well, completed? Well, there is a veteran section, but we're expanding it because it was running out of space. Okay, and we're going to be uh, beautifying it because it was it was limited as far as the um, you know any elements really. There was a basic flagpole, but that was about it. Mm-hmm. You know, so we will be uh, embellishing that area uh, for our veterans for sure. Yeah, will there be a um, a Vietnam veteran ceremony this year, Mayor? Yes, we're looking at the end of June, and uh, we're going to be honoring the late Larry Norton mm-hmm. at that ceremony with uh, with the bench out at the clock tower. Oh, okay. Um, I'll get back to I don't know if it's the 27th or 28th. Off the top of my head, I think it's the 28th. I think it's a Tuesday morning. Uh, and, uh, yes, we'll be at the clock tower. Very nice. And he was, uh, of course probably a... around 2 o'clock, I believe. Okay. He was, of course, a staunch advocate for the Vietnam veterans, so that's, that's a nice tribute for him and his family for sure. Yes, indeed. He did a lot. Uh, he really was, was a outspoken advocate <laughs> on, on their behalf, as well as uh, all veterans. I mean, Larry did it all. Yeah. He, he really, commander of the Veterans Council, commander of the Marset Post, uh, was involved in every aspect of things, you know, lobbying the legislature for changes in legislation that affected, uh, you know, the, the, um, the veteran as well. He just was, was always there, such a presence. Mayor, can you tell me about the documentary City of Generals, Quincy's Modern Day Patriots? Sure, sure. It is, it's up and running, and I know we're getting good feedback. We essentially, Joe, took all the interviews that we had done with the generals prior to the, the General's Bridge dedication with the anticipation of putting something together to kind of um, remember the great, the great stories of these guys, but also the day's events. So we, uh, we did that. And um, so Mark Harry, Lisa uh, Amoler, and uh, Kristen Powell is one of the main workers on this. And uh, we put together, I think it's about 37 to 38 minutes. 
and it really captures the story of these gentlemen and ties it in with what is the Quizzy story, which they all talked about, the date of dedication. So we had parts of their interviews. We had excerpts from the day's events. Uh, and I, I just, just can't, I, I think it's inspirational. I, I hope that young people get inspired by it. I'd like to see the high schools play it around Veterans Day. Uh, these are real stories. These are real families and incredible service when you, when you think about it that was given. So, yeah, and then we're finalizing. We'll also uh, show the entire interviews of each of the generals. They'll be linked to that, which would be really cool. And then, lastly, not a general, but an incredible war hero, and that is Dick Stratton. And he was up. He spoke of General Charlie Sweeney. But we interviewed him about his experience in Vietnam as a POW and his service to our nation. Uh, he lives in Florida. He's retired. He's He's 90 or 91 now. God bless him. He's an uh, incredible American hero. we got to tell these stories, you know, Joe. I, I think that more than ever, we've got to show the younger generation the sacrifices made. So I know it sounds corny, but for the freedoms we, we enjoy today. I mean, we you think about all the discussions and debates and protests and riots and whatever you want to call them in the last few years, and... Um, there's a lot to celebrate in this country. There's a lot to be thankful for. And uh, I know I've said it before, but, you know, in, 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 high, in the high schools here, we're debating pronouns. And in Ukraine, kids were building sandbags to help with the war effort and then had to flee their nation, leave their fathers and brothers so they could defend their freedom over there. So it's, um, it's interesting. We've, we've come a long way, and, and I just think it's important we reflect. No matter what our, our disposition is as far as, conservative, liberal, Democrat, Republican, whatever it may be, um, it's a great day to remember that there's a lot of folks that sacrifice so that we may enjoy what we have today. And I don't think we emphasize that enough. I know we'll be working with your office to, uh, to show that also right here for our viewers on QATV as well, uh, for folks who don't Excellent. have internet access. Yeah. Uh, finally, Mayor, we talked a little bit about uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office looking into the issue of the Long Island Bridge. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a call from the U.S. Attorney, and then we got a letter from her um, asking for all kinds of inv- information relating to the issue of the Long Island Bridge, uh, conservation uh, minutes, city council minutes, uh, any statements that were made. And, and uh, yeah, there's a question of whether uh, they're trying to determine whether we violated the rights of the uh, uh, folks with addiction by preventing them their care, which um, I happen to disagree with. We're providing all the information to the U.S. Attorney as requested, and uh, I hope that uh, it's disposed of quickly, and I, I think it'll be, uh, at least the information I've seen, it should be pretty quickly, that, you know, our, our issue with the Long Island Bridge from day one and throughout has been consistently the traffic issue, the traffic going through our streets to get there. It has nothing to do with the treatment on the island or what Boston wants to do on that island. But whatever they do on that island has implications on our neighborhoods because if you're building a bridge, that's the access to the island. So, as you know, we've been pretty vocal about uh, advancing, encouraging water transportation to that island, much like they've been doing to the kids' program out there for years. Kids go out there during the summer program, program that Tom Menino started, and uh, they go by ferry. So I, I'm not quite sure what the big deal is on, on the issue of why they're so... Um, reserved about not doing the ferry. It's just it's remarkable to me. But anyway, you know, we're, we're providing all the, uh, Jim Timmons, our city solicitor, is one, the fact-finding, putting everything together. He's already forwarded a number of uh, packets of information to the U.S. Attorney, um, and hopefully it will be resolved quickly. What do you think prompted that case, that investigation? Um, I think I'll refrain from saying anything more, Joe. Okay. Speaking of water transportation... The Marina Bay Ferry is back today. It is back with uh, with some service, and I hope people enjoy it. Uh, that's the that's the pilot program we've had for a few years, with the hope that we'll get a permanent ferry service out of Marina Bay, serving the city and the South Shore. Uh, but it continues to provide uh, service in the meantime, so I hope people uh, do get to use it up. It's a it's a nice service, and I tell you, in a day like this, taking a ride into Boston is not a bad thing <laughs> on a boat. <laughs> 
I can just stay on the boat, go back and forth all day today. There you go. <laughs> uh, brand new website, too, that's much more user-friendly, mbferry.com, to buy your tickets and uh, all kinds of information about your destinations there, too. So. Perfect. You're way ahead of me, Joe. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Mayor. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Joe. Enjoy the day. Thank you. You, too.